Hello and welcome to the first of the characters database videos. In this video I'm going to show you how to create not only your characters but also items and locations. I'll demonstrate the forms that you fill out to create these uh, characters and items and so on and I'll also show you how each of these links throughout not only the main document but throughout the whole of Papyrus. That's the navigator, the organizer, and the timeline. So that everything is linked together uh, throughout your work in progress. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so all I've done for this video is just generated or written a, a few paragraphs and mentioned an individual, but in several different ways. I've also done the same thing for um, a location and an item. Right, so the first thing you want to do to access your character database is come up to this icon that looks like uh, two masks and click on it. Okay, so since I originally made this video, um, there's been a menu added called Author. So you can also access the character database from the Author menu. Now the menu also includes everything that's really relevant to you as an author. So you can access a lot of different things from, from within here, including the character database. This straight away opens the character database. In all the databases, that's uh, characters, items, and locations, there are example entries. So to open any entry, you would just double click on it. And as you can see, it opens up the form that you can fill in um, to create your character. Now you can fill these forms in as much or as little as you want. Okay, now normally at this point, the only things I fill in when I create a character are the bare minimums, height, hair color, um, age and that sort of thing. Then as my book progresses and I learn more about my characters, I come back and I fill out more of, this, of the forms, you know, their attributes, their temperaments and that sort of thing. Of course, this is entirely up to you. You can fill out all these things immediately, um, but I personally uh, choose to fill out the forms as I learn what my characters are like. So back to the video. So I'm gonna close that entry. Now to open up the other tables, which are items and locations, or things and places, while in the character database, come up to tables, and open things, tables again, and places. And again, as you can see, there's example um, entries in there. I'm gonna delete the, these, all of these example entries just so that everything in my database is mine. You don't have to do this, but I, I always do this. It's just something I do. Right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a character database for this individual. Dr. John Skinner. So to do that, while in the character database, click new, and obviously in the main name field is uh, Dr. John Skinner. Now for additional names, and th these would be things like nicknames and so on. So what you would do, I've called him Doc, Separate it with a comma. I've also called him John. Separate with a comma. And I've also called him Skinner. I'm going to add one more. And I'm just going to go old man. In lower, uh, all lowercase. It is important that when you, in your main document, use these nicknames, you get the case right. For instance, if I was to put old man with a capital O, it won't link across. You can also add pictures, and those pictures can come from anywhere. They can come from the internet or anywhere on your computer, and you simply drag and drop the picture in. Again, you can fill out as uh, the brief description. I'll say he's um, six feet, age uh, 50, and sex, male. Okay? And I'm gonna go apply. When I go back to the main document, you can now see 
that it's automatically generated links into the document, okay? So for his main name, it's generated a link as well as the other names I've stated. So if I was to put here, um, old man, now that auto capitalized, you'll see it doesn't link. If I do old man again, but lowercase, you'll see their links. That little squiggly line is just because I've got spell check on, I'll turn it off. Okay, so you can see that it didn't link to the old man because it's capital O, but it did here because it's lowercase. Okay, so I'm going to close that entry and I'm going to go to things. And again, it's exactly the same. So with things, I think I called it a K drive like this. And I'm going to, in things, you can say what it is. I'm going to say it's a vehicle, even though it's really just an engine. Owner, uh, Dr. Smith. Oh, no, not Smith. Skinner. And again, you can fill out these fields as much or as little as you want. And I'm going to go apply. Now, again, if I go back to there, you should see the K drive is link, linked. And the same thing for a location. I'll close that entry I just made. So if I go to place and go new, it was Saxton House. Uh, now this is useful where it's linked. So let's say this place that you're creating is a real place. Let's say the Houses of Parliament in London and you find, for instance, their Wikipedia page, you could add the link there. And I go back to the main document and you can see Saxton House is linked. If I open the navigator with the options turned on to show um, characters, items and locations, you can also see them listed there. Okay, it would also be listed in the timeline. If I turn on characters in timeline, you can see that uh, the uh, Dr. Skinner is mentioned, K Drive is mentioned, and Saxton House is mentioned. This would also apply to the organizer. Any, anything that you mention within your characters, items, and locations database is completely tracked throughout the entirety of Papyrus Author. So it's not just a matter of tracking it in your main document, it tracks it through the navigator, the timeline, and the organizer. So it's a really great tool for keeping an eye on uh, your characters and items and locations. Okay? Okay, so that was the first of the character videos. I think you agree the way your characters, items, and locations links throughout Papyrus is incredibly useful. And one of these uh, useful points is for tracking characters. For instance, let's say you kill off a character in, I don't know, chapter five, and suddenly that character appears again in chapter seven. You can track that. So you can see that you've made a mistake and you've reintroduced a character that's dead, and you can quickly correct that error. And that tracking goes through out Papyrus, not just the document. So it's incredibly useful. So until next time, see you later.